Welcome everybody, my name is Tyler Foster, and in this video we'll be touching on the basics of the differences between negative pressure and positive pressure ventilation. So negative pressure ventilation is going to be our body's normal way of breathing. Positive pressure ventilation is us introducing the patient to a ventilator, and we're going to ventilate the, ventilate the patient using positive pressure or non-physiologic ways of breathing. So let's always start off with the normal way to breathe. Um, we have lungs here, we have our apex, we have our base of the lung, let's draw the other one in here. We have our trachea, so just to kind of orient you, <coughs> excuse me, here's our trachea, we have our uh, primary bronchioles, we have uh, kind of our collection of alveoli within our lungs. We have a whole bunch of connecting airway in between. Up here, we have our trachea, it's gonna to connect to our larynx, which will go uh, into our oropharynx. It'll go to the nares and then to the mouth. I'm not gonna draw that in, it's just too much. However, just know that the trachea is going to have the glottis, which can close, so our vocal cords can go together to close, or they can open up to pretty much allow our lungs to see the atmosphere. So those are our two scenarios. We're gonna have, uh, our vocal cords which can close, that's kind of how we cough. <coughs> our glottis or our vocal cords are gonna be closed while we build up some pressure in our lungs. Eventually it'll open up giving us a cough. However, that has nothing to do with ventilation so let's get back on topic here. We're gonna have to draw in some other structures here uh, in the lungs. We're gonna have our chest wall, so our thoracic cavity. I'm gonna draw it in in a circle and I do that for a reason, it's because our, our chest wall is not gonna have, mm, let's, let's put that a different way. Our lungs are not going to be exposed to the atmosphere except for our breathing passageway. So unless we, if we close off our glottis here, our lungs are not gonna be exposed to the atmosphere within our chest wall cavity. So that's why I kind of drew this blue chest wall over our trachea. Then also one other structure I need to put in here is our diaphragm. It's gonna be our major muscle sitting just below the lungs, and that's gonna be our major muscle for inhalation. Now, why do I do all of this? Well, let's take a look at a normal breath. For a normal breath, physiologic breath, our diaphragm is going to contract. Our diaphragm is going to contract, which brings it downwards. Now, what that does is it's going to create a negative pressure within our closed system. Okay, so let's put that again. This is going to be a closed system. Our lungs are not exposed to the atmosphere. Our diaphragm is going to contract, making this cavity bigger. When we have a bigger cavity, it creates a vacuum. And that's how, that's how an air compressor works. So I'm just gonna draw this off on the side here. We're gonna have a piston. This is gonna be our piston. We're gonna have a cylinder that that piston is in, and then here's our air compressor out here, uh, tubing, etc., etc. Our piston is going to push, 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 compacting all of this air. All that air is gonna go through our tubing into a big collection, and then when we, when we squeeze a trigger, we're gonna have a nice uh, stream of air, or if we want a water uh, gun, we would have a stream of water. However, if we were to pull the cylinder back, we're gonna create a vacuum in this space. Kind of like when you have a syringe. So let's say this is gonna be our syringe. It kind of looks like a syringe. When you push the plunger forward, you're gonna eject all of the fluid. However, if you pull this, the, the lever back, you're creating a vacuum which sucks up some fluid. So let's say you're attaching this uh, syringe to an IV. You're gonna withdraw some of the blood. So you're getting a venous sample, for example. Um, and that's because the venous blood will go up into the syringe because you have a negative pressure vacuum. Same thing with the lungs. Our diaphragm is going to pull, kind of like we're pulling the little stopper here, we're gonna pull creating a negative pressure within our lung space. What that's gonna do is it's going to expand our lungs. Now, let's introduce another topic here. We're gonna have a pink layer enveloping our lungs. And 
I'm just going to draw it for half. And then we also have a pink layer that's going to envelop our chest wall. Now it's normally not this large of a space. We have something called the pleura. The pleura. We're going to have two types of pleura. We're going to have our parietal pleura, parietal, versus our visceral. That's an S. So visceral and parietal pleura. Now, kind of fancy words, our parietal pleura is going to envelop our chest wall, while our visceral pleura is going to envelop our lungs. Notice how I drew it in a very continuous fashion. Our pleura is going to be continuous. There are not going to be holes in our pleura. So have you ever heard of a pleural effusion? Pleural effusion. If you heard that fancy term, an effusion is going to be fluid buildup in our pleural space. So a pleural effusion is where somehow we get water built up between these two layers. Normally, our parietal and our visceral pleura are touching one each, each other. They have a nice little kind of wet, slippery surface, but they're touching each other. If we get water between the layers, we have something called a pleural effusion, and that's bad because we lose, well, I guess for a lot of different reasons, which I won't get into. However, normally, our parietal and our visceral pleura are touching. And the reason why it's called visceral pleura is because the lungs are an organ. Viscera means organ. So any layer that uh, lines our organs can be called the viscera or the visceral layer of our, of our pleura. So any of this pleura, 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 the pleural layer is going to be our visceral pleura. All right. so. If I say, hey, can you take out the body's viscera? I'm really just saying take out the body's organs. So that's a little terminology in there. Um, normally our pleura is touching. So when I say that we're gonna move our diaphragm downwards, we're creating a negative intrapleural pressure. Oh man, that's a big negative intrapleural pressure. Man, that is a lot to consider. We have a negative pressure here. Since we have a negative pressure on the inside, it's going to pull our visceral pleura with it. So our lungs are going to expand. That is how we take a breath. When our diaphragm contracts, we're going to create a negative intrapleural pressure. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull on the lungs and create a direction of force like this, if you can see it. We're creating a outward force, which is going to expand our lungs. And when we expand our lungs, it's kind of creating a vacuum just like here. We're creating more space as we pull the plunger back, which is creating a negative space in our volume, which our volume is going to be our lung airways. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this pressure that's in the atmosphere and it's gonna pull it into the syringe. Now, same situation here. We're gonna take the atmosphere. So atmosphere is gonna be our big pink ball here. It's just gonna be air. Our glottis is gonna open. As our lung expands due to this negative intrapleural pressure, we're gonna draw air and create a negative force inside our lungs. A negative atmospheric pressure that air is going to passively go into the lungs. So that is gonna be negative pressure ventilation. It's where we're, we have a diaphragm that's going to contract and it's going to pull downwards. That pulling downwards is going to pull on the, pl the parietal pleura. That pull on the parietal pleura is going to create a negative intrapleural pressure. So negative in here, a lot of negative signs that negative pressure is gonna pull on the visceral pleura, which is attached to the lung, which is going to expand. That expansion is creating a space, a negative pressure space, which is going to pull in the atmospheric air. So this negative pressure space is going to be at a pressure that's below our atmospheric pressure. And when we have a pressure that's below atmospheric pressure, our air is going to passively come in. So we're actively pulling down to passively pull air into our lungs. Now, 
that is going to be our negative pressure system. When our lungs are fully expanded and we're ready for exhalation, our diaphragm stops contracting and it's actually going to return upwards. It's also going to, ex we're gonna exhale because our thoracic cavity doesn't like being expanded all the way. So what it's going to do is it's going to have natural elastic recoil, which is going to push on the lungs, which is going to create a positive pressure in here. So we're pushing, which is going to collapse the lung. As we collapse the lung, we're losing volume. So we take our cylinder here and we're gonna push our plunger. What that's gonna do is it's going to compact all the air that's currently in here, creating a more positive pressure, which is going to expel the contents outwards. So we have a positive pressure in the lungs. It's going to override the atmospheric pressure. And when this pressure becomes more than atmospheric pressure, our air is going to return to the environment, into the atmosphere. That is going to be our negative pressure ventilation, normal body physiology. So what happens when we put somebody on a ventilator? So we're gonna introduce our patient to a ventilator. Let me, uh, let me get different color here. I'm gonna have to draw the lungs again, but I'm gonna draw it a little further down now because uh, we're gonna have an altered uh, kind of scenario here. So again, here's a terribly drawn lung. Here's our trachea. I'm gonna draw it a little smaller this time. We're still gonna be in our closed system. Don't get me wrong here. It's just gonna become a little less important. So I'll bring in the same factors that we just discussed and I'll try and keep everything the same color for clarity's sake. So we have our diaphragm, we have our thoracic wall, we're gonna also have that pleural space, um, et cetera, et cetera. The body is still the same. However, this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a breathing tube. We're gonna introduce an endotracheal tube uh, into the system, or you can do a non-invasive mask uh, for positive pressure ventilation as well. Um, that's where you put a nice tight fitting mask around the mouth so air cannot, cannot leak out the sides. So really it's kind of like inserting an endotracheal tube, just less invasive. Um, so let's say we stick an endotracheal tube down the mouth into the oropharynx. We thread it up, um, up into the glottis and then inflate a cuff right around the trachea. So we're sealing off, off the lungs from the environment except now we have this nice uh, hollow endotracheal tube. That hollow endotracheal tube, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up to our tubing. We're gonna take our tubing here. It'll be connected to a machine. And in our machine, we're gonna have some components that we need to discuss. We're gonna have a cylinder. Now, didn't we just talk about cylinders? Yeah, it's the exact same thing with a ventilator. You can have a bellow within the cylinder. Um, so let's, let's draw a little piston here. Same thing that we just dealt with. So here's our plunger, here's our piston, here's our little cylinder. At the end of the cylinder, we're gonna have a little output. That output is going to hook up eventually to our, our endotracheal tube tubing. That tubing, the circuit system is going to attach to our endotracheal tube which is going to go directly into our lungs, thus creating a closed system. So again, we're not exposed to the environment in this situation. We're hooked up to a, uh, to a cylinder which is going to create pressure. So here, in positive pressure ventilation, our diaphragm is not going to be contracting downwards. If we paralyze the patient completely with a, with a paralytic agent, we give succinylcholine the patient is not going to be able to breathe on their own because we paralyze the diaphragm, we paralyze the chest wall, uh, at least the active motion of the chest wall, so muscles can't contract. All right, now let's talk about how positive pressure ventilation differs. In this scenario, we're going to take our cylinder and we're gonna push on the plunger. So we're gonna compact the air that's in here. That compaction of air is gonna create a nice high pressure that high pressure is going to push through the tubing. We're gonna meet a little bit of resistance in the tubing. However, most of our pressure that we created is going to enter the trachea. It's gonna go down onto our bronchioles. It's gonna go into the terminal airways and eventually reach our alveolus. Our alveolus then 
gets pushed open because we're creating a positive pressure through our ventilator. So this is gonna be our ventilator, if, if I haven't made that clear. We're creating a positive pressure through kind of like a, like a compression, uh, like a air compressor, for example. If, if you have an air compressor at home in your garage, that's the same thing we're doing. We're creating a positive pressure. It's gonna go through our tubing. It's going to push open our alveolus. So our alveolus, we're pushing air in there. Instead of being driven by a negative pressure, which is going to pull on the walls of the alveolus, on the outside, we're pushing air from the inside to push this alveolus open. That's the difference. In positive pressure ventilation, we're pushing from the inside of the airways to open up the alveolus. Our diaphragm is not contracting. So our lungs expand because we're pushing air from the inside out. Instead of pulling from the outside to create a negative space, we have a positive pressure inside which pushes that alveolus open. So our lungs are gonna be fully expanded. How are we gonna get the air out? Well, I said our thoracic wall muscles are paralyzed. However, we're gonna have natural recoil. Our chest wall still doesn't like to be expanded. We've expanded all these alveoli. Our lungs are now completely taking up our thoracic space, pushing our chest wall outwards. We're getting our chest wall movement. Now as we exhale, we're pushing air out. So our ventilator stops feeding all this nice positive pressure into our system, allowing the alveolus to collapse. Why does it collapse? It's because our chest wall pushes back. It's it's resisting the force of our lungs being expanded, thus creating a negative or a positive pressure in our in our pleural space. That positive pressure in our in our pleural space is going to push the lungs collapsed again, thus exhaling. So let's say we need another breath. We're gonna create some pressure in our ventilator. Some positive pressure goes through here. Positive pressure goes through our circuit, down into our endotracheal tube. That positive pressure is gonna enter our lungs. It's going to eventually enter into our terminal uh, airway, which is gonna be our alveolus. It's going to have that positive pressure on the inside, pushing open the alveolus again, pushing the lungs open, pushing the thoracic wall outwards, and then we're gonna stop. Then, then the ventilator says we need to exhale. So it's gonna stop with this positive pressure. Our thoracic wall is gonna push inwards again, thus, uh, thus completing our exhalation. So really, in a nutshell, that's our difference between negative and positive pressure ventilation. We have different modes of positive pressure ventilation, which is gonna be my next video that I'll make. Hope you enjoyed, if you have any comments, let me know. If you'd like a little more detailed explanation of any subject here, be sure to ask. Have a good day.